red. It absorbs ultraviolet, which water does not. It's, a, it's how, one of the ways that they're proving that it's a different structure. Mm. Uh, and there's some, a whole bunch of different ways now that they've come up with the structure of it. Um, so, um, what about uh, Dr. Emoto? He he does intention and water yeah. blessings, and uh, in that vein, how does how can we with our minds impact the liquid in our body for upgrade or change? Or the the only real question is how can we not? There's no way to not impact it with our minds when we have a thought, vo voiced or not. The electromagnetic field of that thought is in the water. In fact, in my the theory as it's emerging, the the consciousness is looking like it has a lot to do with that that water, that field of water. Not only the one outside the cell, but also inside the cell. That that water becomes a coherent state. It becomes a superconductor. I believe with the help of the the spirit minerals, the condensate like high spin minerals that David Hudson has a patent on and it couldn't patent, patent it in the United States because the government acknowledged by saying it's worthy of a patent but you don't get a patent here means that they're already using it in you know in secret operations to you know use it for some black operations they call it so for some some kind of black purposes that they don't want to talk about well we should really know about it as living sentient beings, you know, as opposed to a government that's an idea, a thing that the beings create into reality. But we're directly real. And we can apply this kind of knowledge to how to be better at being <laughs> real. Uh, so, so our thoughts, whether it's in electromagnetic form, internal consciousness, uh, or whether it's voice, now it's still in that same electromagnetic form, plus a, a vibrational form where we're, we're an acoustic vibration, like a, a linear kind of waveform. Uh, those both in in the body are interchangeable. Uh, the, the collagen and other connective tissue elements are piezoelectric. They will change that sound vibration into an electromagnetic signal throughout the body. So when we say something, our body, well, every cell in our body feels that. Mm -hmm. Feels it as an electrical, electromagnetic waveform. So, feels so the waveform of it. If it's with the emotion of love, it's a coherent waveform. That energy is going to get to not only to the body, but to the entire universe. It's coherent. It's like a laser. It doesn't stop. So if we are suffering from a virus or an injury and we're in fear and panic, uh, how could we go about putting good intentions into Yeah, food? especially, I mean, if we're afraid of a panic attack, that's surely going to help bring it on, right? Because the panic attack is fear and we're afraid of it, we're adding our fear of it to it, it becomes a, a cyclic mm -hmm. wormhole. <laughs> and, and because fear is, is, is stimulating the adrenals, it's, it's associated with the kidneys in, in oriental medicine, the, we're, we're, we're using our own internal stimulant. We're drawing on our caffeine. We're drawing on our sugar. Or maybe putting that in at the same time. Right? And that's adding to us depleting our energy and putting us into a low energy state. So what I find helps the most if, if a person is, is going through, uh, you know, if, if, you're, if you're afraid, it doesn't mean you shouldn't be afraid. And, you know, so the question is, should I be afraid? Or am I, you know, is this just my body healing and it's got it covered? You know, do I need to go do something ha with some, take some action, some external input to alter the course of what's happening in my body? Or is this a healing crisis that my body can handle? Uh, so uh, there's a lot of illnesses when they do spontaneously go away, cancer being, you know, the most studied, but pretty much any, any condition. Uh, can go through a remission process, some more than others. MS does it all the time. Uh, and, and there's half of the people with MS lesions diagnosed on autopsy never had the symptoms. Well, they had the lesion, they had the physical damage, but they may have had enough energy level, as this energy level shifts and changes, you go in a low energy state, now that lesion is actually interfering with function. The nerve transmission is not working, but when the wa water's energized, well, it, that's all coded and covered, and 
and you've got not only the the standard nerve transmission of, of that we think about of the, the axon and depolarization and all that, but we have if we have a superconductor all around that, uh, inside and outside, we have ways now to bypass a damaged area through superconductivity of the fluids around the damage. Uh, or, or we'll see uh, where there's a lesion, maybe a scar and in, in nerve tissue. I've seen this in, in a couple of blind people, uh, a condition that causes permanent blindness, the leading cause of permanent blindness in our culture, scarring, and where the body has healed it. And they're getting that kind of result now with stem cell injections, but these people didn't have any stem cell injections other than if you consider their body injected stem cells into all their tissues as it developed. So the stem cells are there, but how do we activate them? Well, they've learned how to activate them in the lab. They've learned how to pay for the, all that research by selling, selling you your stem cells. Uh, but you can regenerate tissue from your own stem cells. And I've seen it with vision. Years, even a few years ago, we thought, well, nerve tissue doesn't regenerate. Well, it's harder to. Kidney tissue is hard to regenerate, too. The harder doesn't mean it can't do it. Uh, there's, there's some research with like, regenerating limbs, starting with, with fingers. They've had cases with using, I think, a silver membrane that creates a, a negative electrical charge, similar to what would be in, in our healing, uh, in our, our, our protective water sheath around the cells and the superconductive medium, that, that that would carry a healing field and it's the limb grows in utero according to a field, a healing field, right? A, a, an energy field that's, that we know, say on Curlian photography, we see a centimeter out and in electroacupuncture, they've proven that, that medicinal information, the photons of light from an herb or a homeopathic medicine will cross a centimeter of vacuum so there's no electrons going across, but there's photons, there's light. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of light in uh, Eastern philosophies, they, um, some yogis practice sun gazing, and so that element, or I don't even know, <laughs> of that light coming in, as you spoke about fasting, how does light impact our bodies? There's, <clears throat> there, I have seen, you know, enough enough, uh, you know, it's testimonial information from a medical point of view, and so that's enough to, to throw it out if it doesn't fit your model, generally, in our culture. But there's, I've seen enough, you know, uh, well-validated testimonial information that, that I think that that is possible. It's, it's an area, you know, to really caution, like, don't go home and try sun gazing, because we're in a culture where, I mean, do you know anybody who's done that? And, and how many of them actually burnt their retina, because see, we've seen that. We can burn our retinas. We can burn our skin with the sun. Does that mean that, that we shouldn't go out in the sun and we don't need sun, and the sun is bad? Not necessarily. I mean, Italian farmers have less, less uh, cataracts than, than Italian office workers, and they're out in the sun all the time, and we're concerned that, that the UV might damage the lens of the eye. It's the most delicate. It's, it's exposed directly to that light. and, and and super sensitive to antioxidant protection and, and has the least circulation of any tissue, is the most dense protein. This is a super sensitive area, highly correlated with longevity, uh, the health and flexibility of that tissue. So a, a study in Australia, they found that sunbathers who, who ate margarine versus butter had 700% more skin cancer. So if we have the wrong fatty acids that our genetics never grew up with, you know, yeah, in our body, those are irritants and they become more damaging, they become toxic if they're energized by light. Every compound is, is, is affected by light energy, by quantum energy, uh, photonic energy. Uh, Nobel Prize winner Albert St. Georgi would say that, that every vitamin, mineral, enzyme, and hormone turns on and off about 500% in activity depending on the frequency of light. Mm -hmm. So, and if you look at every chemical reaction, there's an exchange of quantum energy. There, it's either an exothermic reaction that gives off energy or it's endothermic that, it, that requires energy. 
you're either building thing, chemistry up into bigger pieces that have more energy, uh, or you're breaking them down and releasing the energy and using the energy. But again, the, the, the most exciting recent finding that I've come across in terms of energy is that we can absorb energy, and yes, perhaps directly through our eyes. If, if we're a yogi and we've you know, uh, cleaned out all these layers I'm talking about first, and we're working on, on operating the body on a purely spiritual basis, similar to, to breatharianism, yeah, I think there are some real cases of breatharianism. Um, there's certainly support for that in the spiritual traditions where there's saints that, that are, you know, certified saints, including in the last hundred years, who've lived for decades on virtually no food or water. But what I'm seeing about how the body really works and how it's really made is it has everything in, in, in backup. Everything's in backup. There's always two. There's always a system that, almost always, a system that increases and one that decreases to, in order to maintain balance. So if either one of those systems is out, there's still going to be some degree of backup control. Phase three is kind of in the middle. It's really our, our, uh, our problems, our issues are outside the cell membrane. Uh, and, and so we're dealing with, with uh, in a healing, on a healing basis, we're dealing with regeneration. We're, we're clearing the connective tissue of dead stuff that a fungus would grow on. So we're clearing out the fungus that would grow in that phase three terrain. We're clearing out the stuff it's, it's growing on because our enzymes are working, because the enzymes get working in phase two. We start repairing the cell mechanisms in phase two and have the energy to protect the, you know, we have our shields up, we have, that means we have energy. If we have energy, we're producing repair, we're producing functional parts, we're, we're growing. And, and when that cell is functional, it, it's now in a position to make two cells. You ever think about that? I mean, cells, every cell, when it reproduces, it moves. How does it know where to go? How does it know how to organize those, all those chromosomes so it gets one on each side? It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. There's a, a centriole that all of the microtubules attach into on each of, in each of those new cells. That's, each one is, is pulling the chromosomes to its side, and, and it's part of the cytoskeleton that organizes the structure of the cell. It's that cytoskeleton, probably, perhaps on different models, both inside and outside the cell, the structure that actually crosses over through the, or, or meets at the cell membrane, uh, ties into the cell membrane, that gives us our shape, our structure. It's like how the cell remembers its shape, well it has a skeleton. There's a theory of consciousness that says the only the only theory of consciousness that had been come up with at that point in time that could give a, no, a large enough number of memory data points, of sites, of locations of memory to account for a lifetime of human memory was this cytoskeleton model. And it says that, that these, you know, like these, these tubes, look at them, they're filled with water. Well, if that water is energized water, you know, structured water, which it's going to be, because it's on it next to a protein, uh, and you'd only need, I don't know how many, you could calculate how many layers of water that might be, it's gonna be less than a million, probably, because it's a very small tube. So you know, if, now you have water that's in a coherent state, it's like in a laser-like state, where all those electrons are just chilling with, you, with each other, it's like a pool of electrical energy, it's no longer like separate electrons. If we were to go in with our consciousness and measure it in the act of measurement, we would create electrons. We would interface our energy, real energy, with the energy that's already there and change its state. But now if we put the superconducting minerals on the ends of those tubes, well, there's, there's some evidence that it makes it 10,000 times more conductive. And the same goes for DNA, where you have a double helix and you have a third open part of that spiral that's now going to be like a loop of superconductive water. And that, that with the, the, the minerals of consciousness, the spirit minerals, I like to call them, uh, that becomes 10,000 times more 
conductive, more like a superconductor in a biological system. Uh, okay, so, so in phase three, we're, we're literally, as that water sheath expands, we're pushing out all of the debris, all the junk, all the dead stuff, the fungus with it, into the lymph, clean it out. Uh, if you can't get out the lymph, maybe it'll come out the skin. Well, better out than in, right? It's one of our favorite sayings. Uh, phase four, we're, we're, we've gotten the fungus out, we're cleaning the connective tissue, or maybe we're even inflaming it, where we bring in oxidative uh, free radicals produced by the white blood cells that are going to break down stuff that we don't need. They're going to tear down, you know, we, we have in our American diet about four times more protein than we need for optimal perfect health. You know, a lot of times it's overcooked, so we can't digest it anyway. It's microwaved, so we're not going to digest it anyway because the nitrogen bonds, some of them are broken. The enzymes don't match up anymore. It's going to putrefy. Well, we don't even notice the difference when we eat, you know, food that putrefies on the airplane because it's microwaved, because we're eating too much protein if we're at home anyway. Uh, so it, it, it kind of works, you know, in an American cultural setting, but, but it'll never get us to optimum health. They did a study in Switzerland where they had people eat microwave food, three meals a day, and by the end of two weeks, they could not tell the difference between their control group, which was a group of cancer patients with all clumped up, junked up blood. The healthy people, healthy people, after two weeks of microwave food, looked like the cancer patients. That's when you're down here, you know? The, yeah, uh, the blood gets thick so our cells don't get enough oxygen. We're anaerobic. Even up here with, with layer three of the fungus, it's anaerobic. If we have not enough oxygen, well, our cells have to ferment to get energy. It's about 10% effective, efficient. Wow. Yeah. Uh, phase, so phase four is like allergy and inflammation, uh, cleansing. Phase five is, is balance. It's dealing with life stresses, with, with Endocrine, hormonal communication, communication issues, uh, nervous system related thoughts, life, communication issues, relationship, money, those kinds of things, those kinds of stressors, uh, which means we're dealing with our environment. So as our energy comes up, comes up and out, and, and comes up into the deep systems like the kidneys, hopefully first, and if we have high blood pressure, well, it's a sign that probably the kidneys are having a hard time. The, the blood's thick and it's not filtering easily and the kidneys are the high pressure filter system and that tells the heart to work harder to clean the blood because everybody needs the blood clean and, and if we go in with medication that, that stops the heart from working as hard, the blood pressure goes down, we say it's normal, but we're, less, we're more toxic. We have the original toxins, which were the reason for the acids in the blood not getting out the kidneys, and now we've added the medication. That's a toxic medication that has to get out the kidneys. So, uh, so then we have other symptoms that come up. We try to suppress those. Uh, phase, so phase, from phase five, we're balanced on a physical level, level until the next stressor comes up. We can always go back and heal old issues, old damage, old exposures that we didn't completely detoxify or heal. Uh, and, and 